many kind of girls should have flowers? What kind of girl is that exactly the same? What kind of sexist remark is that same? Can you even comprehend what it's like to be a woman and a civil rights attorney? Do I have to explain the complexities of that notion to you? You can say all of it, man. I am not taking these food stamps. I do. My mom's never wanted to be a, I can't, I can't. So anyway, I got this other job over at that little coffee shop over by Troop, working in the kitchen. I am this queen. And this love story is my prayer. And we pray. Jamal! Jamal will leave you with words pushing your brain against your skull like question mark shaped chokeholds on your spine, sending messages to your reason and raising your arms like oh hallelujah, like like Sunday morning choirs in Clinton Hill, like like hopeful eyes seen beyond the room of anyone's possibilities. I mean, Jamal is every last drop of that. Look, Jamal, there are a lot of things in life that are never gonna make any sense to you at all. That's just the way it is. Things that also, by the way, might actually have absolutely nothing to do with you. Is that so hard for you to believe? You can't always know everything, Jamal. I know you like to think that you can, but you can't. Sorry to tell you. Your wife would. So, it is Sunday, November 26, 2006, at approximately 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday, Christmas. I was only 8 years old. And I didn't even know what was happening. And then it got worse and worse, and, and then it was every day, and I didn't even know what to do. And, and he told me that if I told anybody that my father would die of a heart attack, and I believed him, Jamal. This went on for three years. No longer warm, but not quite freezing. Please, please, just stop! And you're kicking him and kicking him and kicking him until he stopped screaming, until he stopped fighting. He looked like he was dead, Jamal. He was bleeding from his head, his legs were shaking, he was puking all over himself. I wanted to change the world, Jamal. Can you understand that? Are you large enough to get that? There are beautiful autumn leaves and they have finally fallen off the trees and they're floating in carpet in the ground and red and yellow and orange and brown and green that crunchy sound when you walk in the breeze and it smells like fresh, like change, like, like something's about to happen. You know what you are, you tarantula. In these things exposed in this poem, this is your legacy. Abuse your privilege and your grandeur. This is like this beautiful triangle connecting us to St. Jemai. You know the kind of mixed music? The most delicate part of the symphony and, and life is writing songs inside of it and all of the complexities that come with that life and time and movement, this, this magnificent movement, which means this constant change and shape. But thank God you finally found relief. It's like you escaped. Because God has finally granted your wish. And you're dead. I go in the next morning, my desk is completely empty, and I'm served. You know what he served your fucking breakfast? Whatever, Jamal, fuck you. He filed an injunction against me. What does that mean? It's the equivalent of being sued for sexual harassment. He's basically saying that he had to fire me because he felt uncomfortable with me. He's just covering his own ass. Well, he was married too, right? Oh yeah, and he had two children too. Oh, you knew that part too, right? Yeah. I mean, you believe, I mean, the more I think about that man, you know, the more I can't with that man. It's like, the way he flipped on me like that, and the, the type of asshole, like the level of asshole he is, I mean, whatever, you know? What, you know? I mean, I don't know. Sounds like he's not the only asshole. But I'm just saying this. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. It sounds like you played a role in this, too. Okay, well, I did play a role in this, teacher, Mom. But that's because that's the only way it works for me. It's not the only way it works for me. It is the only way it works for me. It's fucking bullshit. That's a cop out. Oh, yeah? Well, what the fuck do you know about how anything works in the real world, Jemai? You've never had to deal with anybody or anything for your whole life. Saint wheels himself furiously out of the gate towards his best friend's old NASCAR secretary. Like a bolt of lightning. Like Jesse Owens holding that gold medal inside the national anthem. Like flying, kicking, stopping, and busting that 13th Amendment. Like those kinds of powerful legs and strong thighs and one foot in front of another. Like, like an accident on the Grand Central Park where a drunk driver to head on collision, your car flips over, you're laying on your left side, and you can't feel your feet, and you're wet in the flood, and you're waking in the desert, and a bomb is screaming at your leg is 20 feet from the rest of you, and your toes are scattered everywhere, and your torso ends at your hip now, like empty, like forever, like, like you can't walk, like you will never fucking walk again. And so, you simply rise to an entirely new life, all resilient, and almost flying out of his winter, and they catch him, and they hold him, and he's home, and Esther and Jamal melt on the same, forming a heart, swollen and beating, and screaming, and crying, and laughing, like forever. His best friend, Alan Williams. His safest place, Esther Alvarez. Saint was happy to be home. About to get on the A train back to Brooklyn. And Esther and Jamal happy to have their family back. And we breathe.